Well, okay, Alan, you're the boss of the bosses. Um, <laughs> so, can you just tell us um, a little bit, little bit about um, your part of this of HRC and um, how you keep everyone in order? Yeah, uh, but the second bit is easy because I don't really keep anyone in order. <laughs> It's that's the hardest bit of the job, really. That's what everyone wants me to do, but then I, that's the bit I don't do very well at all. Um, I think it's it's hard being a boss because it's not. I don't think most bosses want to be the boss. I guess those that do um, they have a certain way of going about things. But that's not me. I ended up here because I was really passionate about the work, and I wanted to do harm reduction work. And because I ended up doing it for so long, because I was in the right place at the right time, I ended up being the boss of the Harmonization Coalition. Um, but what was the first part of the question? Um, See, a boss loses his memory as well. <laughs> um, well, just a little bit about your job. Oh, uh, about my job, that's right. See, I, I, I don't even know what my job is. There's lots of, this is the thing, there's lots of different aspects of my job. So. Every year, I have to like find the money to keep the organization going, and that that is we have to think through that as a staff and as an organization. And as we, if we want to grow and do different things, we have to find new money, and that means we go into the government or go into private foundations, we go into different people. So that's part of my job. I also one of my favorite parts of the job is doing some of the policy work that I do. So that would be right now. I do a lot of international stuff. Even if it's in New York, I'm dealing with the United Nations, and I enjoy doing that a lot. And like next week, I'm going to go to a meeting about Latin America. So it's and for me, that's less about what's happening in other parts of the world, but how the American government relates to the rest of the world. And we got, we should try and influence that to make it sure that the American government doesn't do harm to other countries. Uh, and then there is that bit that we talked about a minute ago about supervision and making sure people are able to do their jobs. And that really it's about supporting people that work here. So that if they need to do something, I can make sure that there's money for it, that they have the tools that they need so that they have the, the, the language that they need because, you know, people need to figure out how to talk about different things. And I guess another aspect is bringing attention to the organization. So when we do the social media stuff um, or m regular media like press stuff and television and newspapers that would be sort of what I do a little bit as well. Okay so um, how do you think people could help um, this organization? Help this organization? Well people can always give us money. Um, certainly if they were really, really, really rich, or actually even if they were really, really, really poor and they just want to give us ten dollars, they could do that too. But I think that it's what they could do is talk about harm reduction as in a, as a strategy for working with drug users. That would that would help us because the more that people understand who we are as as a movement, as like people from all over the world who promote harm reduction, the the more it would help our organization. Um, because that's really incredibly important that when we started doing this long t 20 years ago people were this was not something that was that people looked upon as a good thing to do they thought it was really a bad thing to do and 20 years later we're, we are now people have come around to think about what we do as being the right way of working with people who have drug problems or other problems so we've come a long way in 20 years, but it's, it's not in this country, it's not national policy and we'd like it. So people could help us by believing in harm reduction, practicing harm reduction and respecting, you know, looking at the way we treat drug users and help, help changing the systems so that drug users are not treated so badly in our world. Okay, so what do you think the challenge is? for harm reduction in the United States um, over the next 10 years? I think there's one big one, which is money, because so many of the organizations that do this work are really, really, really small and don't have the money they need to keep going. That's going to be really hard. Secondly, 
the when we started doing this, AIDS was a really, really big problem amongst people who injected drugs, and that's why we started doing this because it was really, really important to you know work with people who were at risk of getting HIV and AIDS, and that has changed a bit, and probably the biggest harm maybe in this country right now is prison. And the way that the criminal justice system hurts people is designed to make people feel pain and be hurt and breaks up families, breaks up communities. So undoing the prison system would be is a really big task in the next 10 years or any going forward right now. And that's, that's a really hard thing to do because so many people's lives are invested in keeping the criminal justice system going. And what we want to do is break it down because it, it hurts so many people. Okay, so how do you think HRC can improve? That's a good question. Um, I think that being more streamlined and integrated, this is an internal thing, right? So we have policy and we have training, but sometimes the training people do what they do and the policy people do what they do. And if it's all one thing and we're all linked together and work together really well, which is really hard for many organizations, then I think that would make us more effective. I think if we did some more bigger media stuff, that would make us, you know, more effective. If we were on television more and newspapers more, that would be good. Um, it's if we could spend more time getting money here too, so we could support the people in their jobs better. That would help as well. Okay, but these are two questions which are kind of linked. Yeah. Um. So the first one is who. If you could be like anyone for a day in harm reduction, mm -hmm. um, who would you most like to be like and why? I would like to be like the dad, Nigel Brunson. Because he's really clever and he's good at what he does. Um, I think, I mean, that, that is true. I think I would, not necessarily your dad, although it wouldn't be a bad thing to be your dad. But it's sometimes when I do my job, there's so many different pieces of it that I can't, feel good about any of them and I'd like to have a job sometimes where I'd feel really really good about what I do in harm reduction sometimes so having it's good for me when I do one piece of work that I start at the beginning and end on time and I do it really well um, so I guess let me answer that differently then I'd like to be myself and I'd like to be able to do my job properly Okay, right, this is the last question now. Have you ever read or seen anything um, that you thought that was really inspiring um, to do with drug work? To do with drug work? Um, you know what it is? I think, I know about, I've, I've, yeah, you know what? It was probably, we did a conference a few years ago uh, and it was a women's conference and there was a lady that spoke at the beginning and she spoke about her struggles with being uh, a drug user and how hard it was and how she kept on coming up against the system and the system would say, well, you have to go into drug treatment and she'd say, okay, I'd like to go into drug treatment, but I want to go with my husband. And they'd say, no, 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 you really don't care. You, um, you are not you don't really want to change your life and she said I do and then she struggled for a few years and then she came to our harm reduction program and she said it was the first time that she ever went to a place where um, she saw something that could work for her and that would support her and actually listen to her and and worked with her and instead of telling her what to do and what was wrong with her, the program could actually, the organization could actually listen to her and help her change her life um, in a supporting role. And, and it did. And she stopped taking drugs, which is what she wanted to do. So did her husband. And they stayed together as a family. They stayed together as a couple. And she went on to work in harm reduction. And she still works in harm reduction. And it was so moving to hear her describe what it was like before before she came across a harm reduction program and what it was like after coming across a harm reduction program, then I just sat there and cried. 
So I think that's inspiring to me. That this that having someone you don't know tell you that what we do works. I think that's inspiring. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess I shouldn't have said I want to be your daddy. She could edit that bit out. <laughs>